Hi, and thank you for taking time out to watch this short video on LACERT software. Even though LACERT is considered one of the most comprehensive programs in the industry, it's very, very easy to learn and very easy to use. Let's take a look. This is the opening screen of the LACERT tax program. We call this the client screen. This is where you do the management of all of your client files and all of your firm's practice management. This is where you add clients, make copies of files, if you want to assign a password, and a number of other functions, they're all found here. But really all you need to know about how to use LACERT is found in the upper left hand side of our program screen where you see five tabs. Really this is all you need to know when you're learning LACERT. And what we've done here is we've laid out the workflow of LACERT and so all you're going to be doing is moving from left to right in the tabs as you complete your client's return. You see the first tab in the upper left it, uh, that's highlighted is clients and that's why on the right side you see a list of all the clients that you have. If I double click and open a return, for example Kevin and Suzanne Jenkins, you'll notice that the tab now slides to detail and this is where you enter the data in LACERT. The data entry in LACERT is very unique. It is not what you would consider a forms based data entry, meaning you're not working directly from the IRS form. We prefer this style of input, something we call the category based data entry. It still matches the flow of 1040 page one and two, but what's nice is you have all screens on one page to make entering the return very simple. So we have a section called general where you would find things like client information, where you enter dependents, or if you wanted to uh, create an invoice, then you have a second section payments and penalties for things like entering 2013 estimated tax payments or filing of an extension. Then you have income with all of the things that are considered income in LACERT in this box from wages to interest to dividends to dispositions, which would be stock transactions, sale of home, continuing at the top of column two. Then we have deductions for entering assets, adjustments to income, which would be like an IRA or a Roth or a SEP, and then itemized deductions. Credits for all your credits, taxes. Finally, on the third column, we have state and local and what we call miscellaneous forms, which are things you're not using every day, but if you'd like to file a 1040 NR, a power of attorney, amended return, you'll find those forms there. So the data entry is very simple. If you have wages, simply click the wage screen. If it's a business that you'd like to add for the client, click screen uh, on business income and enter the business income. You'll notice that certain screens or the label of certain screens is bolded. A bolded label just indicates that you already have data in that screen. So it's very easy for you to recognize by looking here at the table of contents, which screens are in active screens and which ones aren't. You'll also see at the very bottom, we make data entry very simple because every tab or every screen that's bolded also has a corresponding tab running along the bottom of the page. And the reason we create tabs here is so that our customers don't constantly have to come back to the table of contents to access another screen that they know is already part of the client's return. So once you've done a return in LACERT and you transfer that information, let's say from 2013 to 2014, the tabs when you open up next year's return will already be here. So really to complete the return, all you're going to do is click on wages and then enter the interest and then update the dividends and go to Schedule C and Schedule E. Very, very simple and logical layout. Now, if you ever want to return to your table of contents, it's the tab in the lower left that says contents. So that's a very high level look at data entry. Now let's take a look at the next tab at the top of our screen. Once we've entered the data, now we want to review the completed return. The next tab is called Forms. This is where we see the results. Now the Forms tab, you don't enter data here. This is just a review of the completed tax return. The navigation is handled down the left hand side of our program page. In the upper box, we have a box called, or the up, uh, upper section, we have a box called State. I've got U.S., that's federal obviously, and then I've got a California return. Because U.S. is selected, that's going to show us all of the federal forms in the lower section here. All the forms, the schedules, the worksheets, everything that's part of the client's tax return. You never have to do a print preview in LACERT to see your documentation. It's simply a matter of clicking the form and pulling up an exact duplicate of the IRS form. Again, this is the same uh, information that would be printing for the client. 
Now we do have some great tools as you start to review your tax returns. One of those is if I scroll down, you'll start to see these little WKSs on your screen. These are worksheet links that give you quick access to all the underlying calculations that LACERT performs. So if I want to know in LACERT how we've arrived at our IRA calculation, we put the worksheet link directly on line 32. Simply click it and we bring up the IRA deduction worksheet so you can see line by line how we've computed the IRA. You'll see those all over your forms. The other and probably most compelling feature in LACERT when you're reviewing is we have a function that you can go to any line on your tax return. For example, I have $7,125 on line 9B qualified dividends. If I want to know as the preparer exactly where those numbers were entered in data entry that consists of this 7,125, all I do is I right click on the field. I say jump to input and it brings me up a cross reference, electronic cross reference showing me the source of my entries. This is a very important so you always know where the numbers are flowing from. In this case, it tells me some of it's coming from the 1099 DIV screen. It lists every payer I've got, but on the right, it only lists those payers with amounts for qualified dividends, Alliant Credit Union, Smith Barney. But it also pulls in any K-1s for partnership that you might have, S-Corp, Estate and Trust, and the 8814, because these all, all of these screens have an entry for qualified dividends. You can see Trinity Investments has a $6,000 entry for qualified dividends. Now, if that number was incorrect and I wanted to edit it, all I do is click Trinity Investments link and it takes me back to data entry directly to that right to the particular K1. And all I do is I make the change to 5000. As soon as I return to the form, it will update my number. So any line in LACERT, practically any line in LACERT, you can right click and see exactly the source of your data. Very important. Last but not least in review, you have the ability to check off things on your screen, just so you know in your mind you've already reviewed them. Cl pass your mouse over line 7, click, it's going to draw a little green check mark. So all you do is pass your mouse, as soon as you see the, the little check mark there, just do a normal mouse click and it draws on your screen a check, just to, just to say that you've reviewed it. Now those checks don't print anywhere on the printed form. The worksheet links don't print on your printed form. Just a couple of tools our engineers have designed to help make the process of review much, much simpler. After forms at the top, we go to diagnostics to see any errors, any omissions that we might have. Now, I don't have any critical warnings, so I'm going to go back to my Schedule C and remove this, the principal business code to create what we call a critical diagnostic warning. So you see in the upper section, critical warnings, these are things that are generally related to e-file and that you absolutely must fix the stuff in the top. So here it says Schedule C number one, you're missing the business code. You click the link, it takes you to the Schedule C and automatically allows you to select the appropriate business code. Once you go back, once the diagnostics is fixed, it disappears. And then you're left with what we call informational diagnostics. And really, depending on the program that you're currently using, I think this will be a big upgrade. LACERT has over 12,000 informational diagnostics, not errors, just things that our engineers want to make you aware of. And I've had people tell me when they use LACERT, it's almost like having another set of eyes looking at the tax return. Last but not least, we also supply you with a tab called Analysis. The Analysis tab is included and this provides you with some planning information that you can use to have conversations with your client. You finish the return, but you want to provide them with more detail. We break it down by retirement contributions, future tax savings, tax tips, and Schedule A and Schedule C comparison flags. The retirement contributions will say things like they saved $2,800 by their $10,000 IRA contribution. They could have also contributed up to $4,558 to a self-employed retirement plan would have netted them a savings on the return of $1,276. Future tax savings are giving you the same information for next year, assuming at this point that the return is going to be somewhat similar. Tax tips will tell you things like their taxable income is $166,792, placing them in the 28% bracket. Uh, it would have to increase next year by exactly $56,258 to bump them into the 33% bracket. And the comparison flags are comparing this return with the national average. Uh, in this case, on a Schedule C, it's telling you that the gross profit is 72% higher than the national average for a business of this type 
with similar gross receipts. You can print this report with every return with the click of a button or you can do it on selective clients. Some clients don't print it, they just come here in a tab when they're sitting with the customer and have these conversations. So that really is the entire workflow of LaCert. You can see why we are ranked as the easiest program to learn and use. So while the program is extremely comprehensive in terms of what it can do from a tax and tools perspective, we just think the design of this is so good that anyone can use it. And it would literally take you under 10 minutes to become a, a, a user of LaCert and to really understand and, and, and get the full benefit. So thank you very much for watching today's webinar.